Welcome to Podnets Daily for December 18th, 2008, episode number 124. There, I said it. Okay. We got on the, the agenda for today. Let me look here. Okay. Bit, busy. I know I sound like Joe Pesci when I say that. Okay, okay. Busy season in the shop. We're, we're basically getting killed in a good way. Tons of business this, like... Two weeks before Christmas, um, I think we're like setting records for the amount of business we're doing. We think it's because kids are coming home from college, coming home to broken computers that they have or computers that they've they've come home and broken that their parents have at their houses or whatever. And we're just getting a huge influx of, of business. A couple other people in the business I, I know are also getting killed too. So I didn't remember this happening last year, but I guess it does um, – Around this time, around this time period, you get a lot of business right before Christmas. Um, not for sales either, for just fixing up your compu- fixing up computers. Well, that is keeping us busy, so we're doing real good with that. Um, I've raised the prices on laptop jack repair, so that's a little less stressful for me. You know, I I, I could take more time to do the job and not worry about getting paid only seventy nine or ninety nine dollars. I raised it up to one twenty for laptop jack repair. Um, what else? We're selling Norton's like crazy, Norton 2009, not Norton Internet Security, Norton Antivirus, which also comes with anti-spyware. It's a lot faster than the older version, so I actually feel good about recommending it. Like I said before, I've never had a problem with how Norton stops viruses. I've always had a problem with how Norton slows a person's machine down and compromises the speed of your machine. It's a give and take, but now they really slimmed it down. You know, it's, it runs great, and I'm really happy with it. With it. So I'm, I keep selling Norton. What else? Okay, here's some tech tips. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this. On a monitor, if you hook up a computer, you get a computer in, and you're, and you're trying to repair it, and you turn it on, and maybe you see the flash screen, and then the computer says, display mode not supported, and you get no picture on the screen. Basically, what the what's happening is the graphics card is putting out a resolution that the monitor can't show and therefore you can't see what you're doing. The monitor can't, can't show it. So here's what you do, an easy fix. You just start the computer up. You hit F8 at boot up and you boot into safe mode. Once you're in sa- – because safe mode boots at low resolutions normally. Once you're in safe mode, you go ahead into display properties, change the resolution. Then you could boot into normal mode and everything will be fine. Okay, a customer brought me in an iMac the other day. This – this iMac, what did it do? Um, oh, okay. It had a checkerboard pattern on the display, which in Apple's, um, I've, this is like the third one I've dealt with on an Apple. It is not the monitor. It's actually the graphics adapter. It's the display card. And it's, uh, the, you know, because the, the light, the, the bulb in the screen is fine. The screen itself is fine. But what's being displayed on the screen is scrambled, and that's what the problem is. I took the whole thing apart. This was an iMac 15-inch. G5 with the eye, um, the eye, eyesight, I think they call it. And what a pain in the neck to take apart. We finally got the thing apart, found no physical problems, no capacitors blown, this sort of thing, and put it back together. Now, the customer came in. I told her, look, I got to charge at least something. I took the thing apart, took a while. I charged like 25 bucks. But it was also educational for me because I got to take apart a computer I've never taken apart before. Um, the newer iMacs are a breeze to take apart, but this older one just, uh, really, really tough. Anyway, at least to get to the motherboard. So she's saying, well, can you sell it for me? And can you do this? And can you do that? She wanted basically didn't knew it was she didn't want to get it fixed. And she wanted me to, she was going to sell it to me and maybe get, I could buy a part and fix it and then sell it and this kind of thing. And I just, at the time I did not, I had nothing really, I didn't want to do anything with it. So I said, look, there's a, a Mac store down the street. It's not, not an Apple store, but an authorized Mac retail uh, repair guy down the street. And take it to him. I've taken apples to him before where I've had a problem with them or they were actually under warranty and this guy could fix them under the warranty. And he uh, and he's good, so take it to him. So she took it down to him. She comes in the next day and says, yeah, I sold it to him for $40. And I'm like, well, I, I'm thinking to myself, I would have bought the thing for $40. I just had this feeling. She, she came in to tell me that just to spite me <laughs> because I would have bought the thing for $40 in a second. I mean, it was an iMac G5, might have been a bad logic board, but the screen was good, the hard drive was good, memory was – everything else was good. Could have been replaced $40 for an iMac G5. 
That's a deal, guys. See, that's the kind of stuff you could find on Craigslist if you look real close. One in a hundred or one in a thousand. No, I would say one in a thousand or maybe one in ten thousand. You find these gems. And I consider an iMac G5, 50, it was 17 inch, um, with a bad logic board for $40. That's a steal, guys. Anyway, so maybe it is worth it to, um, I should have, I should have, um, uh, humored her and found out what she was willing to offer me price wise, but I didn't know it was going to be 40 bucks. So I would have taken it a second. Wireless card. Okay. I had an e machines laptop and some of these, you don't see them every day. E machines laptop came in. What did they make these things for one or two years? I hardly ever see e machine laptops. Um, was running slow, had 512 megs of RAM, except it was running internet security, internet, Norton internet security 2006, which is a dog. And he was also having problems with his wireless card. Um, this is the moral of this story is um, how to fix wireless cards, basically. He, he had intermittent service on his wireless card. Sometimes the card itself, not the signal, the card itself would work and then it would not work. All I did, open up the bottom of the computer, pull out the wireless card. You got to unhook the two antenna wires from it and make sure that the slot that it's sitting in is clean there's no foreign matter in there, especially on a dusty computer. Things could get into that slot and cause, wreak havoc with these wireless cards. Also, if a computer gets banged hard enough, the wireless card might be out, come out. I've had computers where the wireless card was out halfway. It would cause the motherboard not even to start. So just pull the card out, clean the slot that the card goes in, either with a toothbrush or take a full can of compressed air and just blast it into that slot and just blow out any foreign mat material in there. Just clean off the, the leads on the wireless card itself. Make sure they're clean and no, no obstruction. Put it back in. Make sure it's making a good connection. Make sure it snaps in properly. Hook the wires back up to it. And that was the fix right there. Worked fine after that. Uh, here's another thing you could do. On a desktop, a customer bought an e-machines desktop. They said the power button is broken. This is like twice. Um, pretty recently, I've come in with customers think that their power button's broken, where it's actually either the power supply or the motherboard. So what I like to do in these cases where they think it's just the, the power button that's broken is because if I, if they pick it in thinking the power button's broken and I say, you know, it needs a new motherboard and I have to charge, I charge them like, you know, 200 bucks for the repair or however much a motherboard costs. Well, what I like to do is while they're there, I pop the thing open. If they think it's a power button, I pop the thing open. I take the power supply tester. I test their power supply, make sure that the power supply is good. Um, and then I test the motherboard there too. Basically, if the power supply is good and the computer's not powering on, 99% of the time it's the motherboard. So right then and there, I diagnose it in front of their face. I say, look, this is what's going on. It's your motherboard. It's how much it's going to cost. At least they don't think I'm trying to rip them off because they thought it was it was just a button problem. And a lot of times when the customer comes in thinking the power button 